Have you noticed that your blood sugar in the morning is higher than when you went to bed? That is odd because in your sleep you don't eat or drink. So how can it be that your blood sugar in the morning is higher than before you went to bed? Now of course this can be explained by several things and often there isn't a very complicated explanation for this but it's good to be aware why this happens because you might otherwise be confused by the high reading you get in the morning. I'm Ali from Illness Free Life and in this video you'll learn why you often see a high blood sugar reading in the morning, why you shouldn't be too concerned with this and what you can do about it. Of course, things like your diet and medication have an influence on your blood sugar levels and they might for some reason explain why your blood sugar in the morning is higher than when you went to bed. But more often than not, there is something entirely different going on when it comes to high blood sugar readings in the morning. Although it could be the case that you've eaten something late at night which presents itself as high blood sugar in the morning, more often than not, what you're seeing is something we call the dawn phenomenon. And this is in 99% of the cases, the reason why you experience high blood sugar in the morning. The dawn phenomenon is something all diabetics seem to experience, both type 1 and type 2. Between 25 to 50% of all type 1 diabetics, for example, seem to experience the dawn phenomenon. And to understand what this dawn phenomenon is, it's good to understand what the liver does in our body. Although most people know the liver as the detoxifying organ of our body, it has several other functions. One of which is that it's a place of storage for our excess sugars in the form of glycogen. Up to 6% of the liver's weight is stored energy in the form of glycogens which can be turned into glucose which is sugar for your blood sugar. As you probably know our body always needs energy. Whether we're awake or asleep it doesn't matter we need energy to function properly. The question is of course what do you do when you are not able to eat or drink, i.e. you're asleep. In those six to seven or eight hours of sleep, you also need a consistent stream of energy. And this energy has to come from somewhere. Not only do you need energy, you also need a consistent blood sugar level. Because in your sleep, you don't want to get low blood sugar levels, which is dangerous. And of course, you never want to have high blood sugar levels, which is also dangerous. Our body strives for something we call homeostasis, which is basically like a set point we like to operate around. Your body likes to regulate your, for example, bodily temperature around a certain set point, your blood sugar around a certain set point, and whether you're awake or asleep, it always wants to keep within range of that set point. And this also goes for your blood sugar. The way your body does this when it comes to your blood sugar is by producing contra-regulating hormones in your sleep. Those are hormones such as glucagon, adrenaline or epinephrine and cortisol. Now these hormones have several reactions in the body and several effects in the body, but the most important ones when it comes to the blood sugar are two. One, they increase your insulin resistance, which increases your blood sugar levels, and they increase the release of glycogen from the liver and muscles, and convert them into glucose, which also increases your blood sugar levels. And this way, your body will be able to maintain a normal or healthy blood sugar level in your sleep. Because in your sleep, you still need a lot of sugars to burn for energy in your body. Your brain is hyperactive in your sleep and it burns up a lot of sugars. So does your gastrointestinal system and every other organ and muscle and cell in your body still needs energy. And by using these contra-regulating hormones to release more sugars into the bloodstream, you can maintain a healthy blood sugar because you're not eating, you're not drinking, and if your body didn't have a mechanism to protect you against decreasing blood sugars because your body is burning more and more of the sugars in your bloodstream, you eventually would end up with extremely low blood sugar. The fail-safe for this for your body is by releasing sugars from the storages in your muscles and liver and thus maintaining a somewhat healthy blood sugar level or at least preventing low blood sugar in your sleep. 
Now, there is also another reason why you might experience high blood sugar in the morning besides the dawn phenomenon. It's something called the Somogi effect. And although this also causes high blood sugar levels in the morning, it has a totally different cause and mechanism. Some people experience low blood sugar in their sleep, and this could be because their body uses, for example, more sugars than it's releasing per unit of time, or these people used too much medication before they went to bed, which would cause low blood sugar in their sleep. Whatever the reason is, when people, all people experience low blood sugar in their sleep, their body will dump a massive amount of sugars from the liver or the muscles in the bloodstream to combat this low blood sugar level. Because for your body and in general, low blood sugar in the short run is way more dangerous than high blood sugar in the short run. Some people walk around with high blood sugar for weeks, months or even years but you are unable to walk around with low blood sugar because if you have low blood sugar, really low blood sugar, you'll often faint or you could even get into a coma. To prevent your body from experiencing all these problems, your body will dump a lot of sugars in your bloodstream, in your sleep, if it measures low blood sugar levels. And this will of course spike your blood sugar levels and if you wake up in the morning and measure your blood sugar before eating, you'll notice very high blood sugar levels. Now, the easiest way to differentiate between whether you're experiencing the dawn phenomenon, a normal reaction of the body to maintain healthy blood sugar levels in your sleep, or the Samogi effect, which is like a nuclear reaction to extreme low blood sugar in your sleep, is by how you wake up. Do you wake up sweaty, with a wet pillow, tired, groggy, confused? then these are all symptoms of experiencing low blood sugar in your sleep. Do you experience high blood sugar without all these symptoms I just mentioned? Then you're probably experiencing the dawn phenomenon and thus you have high blood sugar levels in the morning before eating due to those contra-regulating hormones your body releases in your sleep. Quick, before we continue, do you like this video or want to receive more of these videos? Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe for free to this YouTube channel. That way you'll never miss a video we publish and you'll help us reach more people to improve their blood sugar and reverse their type 2 diabetes with a healthy lifestyle. And now back to the video. Now you might wonder, is the dawn phenomenon dangerous or unhealthy? Well, not really, because all people, whether diabetic or not, will experience the dawn phenomenon to some degree. The problem, of course, with people who are insulin resistant or have high blood sugar or are type 2 diabetics is that they're already insulin resistant and they already have high blood sugar levels and already have problems with managing healthy blood sugar levels. If you add on top of all these problems the contra-regulating hormones that definitely always will be released by your body in your sleep, then you're increasing the insulin resistance and thus increasing the blood sugar levels these people wake up with. So where a healthy person might have a slightly increased blood sugar levels due to this dawn phenomenon, people with insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes will have way higher levels. Research shows that in diabetics, HbA1c levels, so the long-term blood sugar levels, will be elevated around 0.4% by the dawn phenomenon, which isn't a crazy increase to be honest. Now, the same research also tells us that combating the dawn phenomenon isn't really possible by using medication. Most medication you use against high blood sugar and type 2 diabetes actually increases insulin resistance over time. And because the dawn phenomenon also increases insulin resistance over time, the two will actually strengthen each other. So trying to combat the dawn phenomenon by taking more medication, whether it's before you go to bed or as soon as you woke up, after sleeping to lower the blood sugar isn't the way to go. You're trying to combat a natural evolutionary mechanism of the body to protect itself from low blood sugar. And research also shows that trying to combat the dawn phenomenon with medication doesn't help in the long run. What does help is something completely different. If the contra-regulating hormones such as glucagon and adrenaline or epinephrine and cortisol increase insulin resistance, then you want to do something that decreases insulin resistance. 
And the best thing you can do to decrease insulin resistance is eating and drinking healthy and working out. Those are the two proven things that will improve your insulin resistance and thus improve your blood sugar levels and will also counteract the effects of the contra-regulating hormones that are released in your sleep. Now, after watching this video, you might wonder, hey, why do health professionals still want to measure my fasting blood sugar levels? Because apparently there's something called the dawn phenomenon and it influences my blood sugar in a bad way and it makes me seem have higher blood sugars than I normally have. Well, there are several reasons. One of which, unfortunately, is that a lot of health professionals don't know anything about the dawn phenomenon. If you want to test this, then go ahead, ask your health professional if the term dawn phenomenon says anything to them. Often they look at you like you're crazy and don't know what you're talking about. You can also frame it in a different way. Ask your health professional why you always see that when you measure your blood sugar before going to bed, it's always lower than after you wake up, despite you not eating and drinking in your sleep. Again, you often see that they won't give you the right answer, which is the whole contra-regulating hormones, protective mechanism of the body to maintain healthy blood sugar levels in your sleep. So that's one part of the problem. The other part is of course a practical problem. Health professionals need to know what your blood sugar levels are. And of course, they could let you have breakfast first and then come in to get your blood drawn and measured. But the problem of this, of course, is that they will measure your breakfast in the blood, which will increase your blood sugar more often than not and thus give a false positive or make you look more unhealthy than you really are. And yes, they could tell patients, don't come in until 1 or 2 p.m. so that all the effects of the dawn phenomenon have worn off and then we can measure your blood and measure a good blood sugar level. But of course, telling people to not eat or drink until 1 or 2 p.m. is of course a very, very long period for most people. That's why we at Illness Free Life always tell people to only look at the HbA1c levels. Although measuring your fasting blood sugar or at any moment of the day could tell you something about your blood sugar, type 2 diabetes and health, it's always just a snapshot of that moment, of that day, of that blood sugar at that moment. And although it might say something about that moment, it might not say anything about all the other days of the week, which the HbA1c does. The HbA1c measurement is the average of your blood sugar over a period of two to three months. It's like you've measured for every second for a period of two to three months, which is of course super accurate. The HbA1c measurement never ever lies. Whatever that is, that's your average blood sugar and it says way more about your health than a fasting blood sugar reading or any other reading you do throughout the day. That might at most tell you something about your blood sugar at that moment, but not in general over a long period. So just know, if you often measure fasting blood sugar levels, it's okay to do, but know that they will always be artificially raised by the dawn phenomenon. They will always make your situation look worse than it actually is. And if you want to do tests yourself, then maybe the blood sugar just before you go to bed is way more telling about your health than the blood sugar right after you come out of bed. So basically measure your blood sugar right before you go to bed because that will probably be more honest and more accurate than a fasting blood sugar level in the morning because that will have experienced the dawn phenomenon already. Now, what can you do to combat high blood sugar in the morning or the dawn phenomenon? Well, like I said in this video, the only thing you can do is by improving your insulin resistance. By improving your insulin resistance, you combat the effect of the contra-regulating hormones that cause the dawn phenomenon and thus high blood sugar readings in the morning. And the best way to do this is by eating and drinking healthy. Yes, working out definitely helps, but eating and drinking weighs way more in total than working out. Working out is an addition to a healthy lifestyle but you are never able to outrun a bad diet. If you want to learn more about what's healthy and what's not when it comes to blood sugar and type 2 diabetes, 
click here for a video or visit the link to our website in the description of this video with an article about the Dawn phenomenon. And there you can also subscribe for free to our Diabetes Free Secret, which is a document we give away for free in which we teach you the main causes of high blood sugar, insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes and what you can do to prevent them, improve them, fully reverse them with a healthy lifestyle. The same healthy lifestyle that will improve your high blood sugars in the morning and counteract the dawn phenomenon. So click on the link in the description, subscribe for free. And if you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.